Planetary Liberation, April 28, 2020 by Anna Von writes. We cringe here at the Living Law Firm when we hear buzzwords and euphemisms, because we have learned firsthand and down and dirty just how much the use of such deceptive language has cost us, individually, and as a global family. See today's case in point, planetary liberation. This planet will be free when men and women free their minds and hearts from the chains of false beliefs and authorities. And not a moment before, or by any other process. Think about it, realizing that you have been lied to since babyhood. You've been lied to on purpose by government officials and media persons and corporate robber barons, but you have also been lied to unintentionally by parents and teachers and others who passed on incorrect or incomplete information without meaning to. Many people are expressing dismay over President Trump's performance and asking, why isn't our president doing this or that, or just standing up and telling the truth about this coronavirus hoax? Well, for starters, he isn't our president, though he is our employee. Mr. Trump works for the Queen who exercises our delegated powers and tells him what to do. He is acting as the president of the United States of America, not the president of the United States of America. The difference, which you can only see when it is spelled out as above, and not when spoken verbally, is huge. As President of the United States of America, Donald Trump is in charge of the double bankruptcies of the United States, Inc. and the United States of America, Inc., a foreign municipal city of Rome corporation and a British territorial corporation, respectively, both operating on our shores. He is obligated to represent the best interests of the Pope and the Queen in these bankruptcies and the best interests of the employees and pensioners scrapping to get their share out of it. As the President of the United States of America he would be in a far different role, and would be assisting us and representing our interests as the priority creditors of both the United States, Inc. and the United States of America, Inc. We honored his election by 63 million Americans, most of whom were never legitimately federal citizens at all, but he has declined to occupy the actual office that we all think of when someone says, President. Perhaps he thinks he can do more good acting in the capacity he has chosen. That said, his current position places many limitations on him, and that is not likely to change in the short term. The settlement and vacancy period for the United States, Inc. Bankruptcy began in mid-March. For 90, 90 days the municipal government has to vacate Washington, D.C. The COVID-19 hoax has provided them with a convenient excuse for shutting down for three months and the live exercise of conducting a simulated war scenario has given them access to defense funding in the interim to keep essential services functioning. The Queen is under obligation to protect American state nationals and American state citizens and to honor every jot of the guarantees we are owed under the actual territorial constitution. She has no such obligation to the citizens of the United States. This is why it is of such grave importance that Americans declare their proper political status as American state nationals and or American state citizens. We need to do this for our own sakes, for our own protection. We also need to do it for the sake of our country. We are not U.S. citizens subjects of the Queen and we are not citizens of the United States subjects of the Pope, either one. As long as we unwittingly permit the Pope and the Queen to play their game of misidentifying us as their employees and dependents, that is, as some form of U.S. citizen, they have no obligation to us under any constitution. And therein lies the rub. They have been deliberately employing an institutionalized fraud scheme involving false registration of American babies to evade their obligations under their respective constitutional agreements. The Queen has been claiming that we are British territorial U.S. citizens, and then surrendering us to the Pope's municipal government as paupers, poor abandoned babies, wards of the state, subjects of the Commonwealth. The Queen and the Pope have been colluding together to do this, openly, since 1937, when their minions here signed the Declaration of Interdependence of the Governments in the United States. Of course, we were never told a word about this, and were simply victimized by this institutionalized fraud scheme, by which they have conspired against both the Constitution of the United States of America territorial and the Constitution of the United States municipal.
To top it all off, the Pope holds both the right hand and the left hand in this situation, as he directly controls the municipal government federal civil service and, through the Queen, indirectly controls the territorial government U.S. military and dependents as well, because the Queen acts as his overseer of the Commonwealth, and Puerto Rico and the Marianas Islands are British territorial commonwealths operating as United States possessions. Through this back door, this entire collusion against us and against our country has been papered over and staged and justified as a Commonwealth issue, and then applied throughout the entire country and to everyone in it, as if we were all the abandoned sons and daughters of run-away Puerto Rican sailors. No, dears, we must liberate ourselves. Donald Trump is in no position to do it for us, and couldn't even if he wanted to. The task of freeing our own minds and of realizing who we are and of bringing forward our true identity, and claiming what we are owed, is ours and ours alone. Run, don't walk, go to, www.theamericanstatesassembly.net and join your state assembly.